So I'm going to give uh, an overview of where we are at this point. Um, and this is Team 16 DCDC. So the goals for our project were pretty much three things. I, I mentioned competency-based education uh, in some of our past things, but um, I'm going to sort of try to take a step back from that and just focus on the XAPI elements here. So the first thing we wanted to do, pretty much like all of you guys, was use XAPI. In this case, we want to catch what our learners are doing. Our second major goal was to embed some sort of educational framework into the data that we're collecting in these XAPI statements. In other words, we want to know what they did as it relates to specific instructional goals uh, for our group, who's cons who consists of quite a number of instructional designers, to use this as a method of identifying improvements. And then the third thing was to visualize that data uh, from the perspective of the educational framework, so not maybe not so much those streams that uh, that you know we see a lot of tools are, are doing, but more from the exact visual structure of the framework that we're using, uh, and then uh, use that to expose specific problems, uh, trends that students are doing, enable A/B testing, and, and so forth. So these were essentially the three goals that we were trying to get out of this project. So. We were doing these in relation to a course that we're developing called LTEC 112. It's, a, it's an undergraduate uh, course. It's a tech survey. It's essentially the, to help students prepare um, themselves to be academically ready for using technology at our institution. It's a common problem in higher ed, and it's, you know, it's, it exists here in Hawaii, too. So that's essentially uh, the course that we're doing this within. So I'm just saying that so you have some context as we move along. This has been used before, and we're, we're using it again. I know Jesse used this, and I think maybe somebody else has too, but we used Bloom's uh, revised taxonomy for our framework, uh, and that's mostly because it's, it's probably one of the most simplistic ones to use. It's, a, it's probably the easiest to understand. If you're not familiar with Bloom's, the, the sky view of this is essentially there are six um, sort of categorized methods of viewing the uh, intellectual capabilities of a student as it relates to some goal that you want them to do, whether they can remember a content, understand it, apply it, and so forth. Presumably, the, the closer you get to from remember to create, the more complicated the thought process is, but each piece is equally important. So that's, that's basically, I'm not going to get too much into the details of it. So the technology we're using, uh, it's mostly WordPress and Learning Locker. WordPress is what we use for our content delivery system. Within WordPress, we have pretty much two, uh, two instructional objects that, that contain information for our students. The first one is a, is a content object, which is primarily the instruction. And it essentially looks like something like this. It's our, our course site with dashboard, their student information, benefits overview, our, the various tools that we have integrated into our system that we're hopefully hoping to get XAPI incorporated with over time. Mm. Um, but that's essentially what you're looking at. Okay. The next major object is our assessment object. So these live in sort of two separate pieces within, within WordPress, and we connect them on the front end. And our assessment objects look, you know, something like this. Uh, in this case, it's a quiz. We're trying to keep this simplistic. There's some visuals up here that, uh, that don't actually show the student. But for instance, you can see the 1.1.1a remembering. Uh, that's our labeling system for <clears throat> the Bloom's taxonomy for that specific question. Mm. And I'll give you another example in a minute, but this is essentially the assessment object. So the reason they're kind of separated is because we're passing somewhat different XAPI statement structures along. The uh, content objects just send the sort of the traditional XAPI without the framework stuff uh, built into it. The main reason we did that was because each question in the assessment has a, uh, a different Bloom taxonomy term, remembering, understanding, applying, and some subterms apply to it, uh, and we didn't want to do it at the whole content level uh, just because it would have gotten complicated. So when a student goes to the website, you know, they're looking at the content pages, their normal view and clicking and that kind of XAPI statements are being collected <coughs> at the content level. And then when they go to the assessment, every time they interact with it uh, at uh, like a quiz question or, or something they're uploading, uh, each one of those items also has the Bloom taxonomy integrated into the actual statement itself. So we can go back and and categorize and look at results related to the to the framework. Cool. So here's just a quick question of, or a quick example of what we're doing. I'm just doing remembering because it's probably the, the least complicated to uh, to explain. Hmm. So 
Uh, we have a question on one of our quizzes that's, what is the URL to access your UH University Hawaii? Gmail, we have a short answer box. The answer is gmail.hawaii.edu. And so we're labeling this remembering and recall. So remember, the definition we're working with is require students to remember facts, concepts, or procedures. We don't assess their ability to understand why they go to gmail.hawaii.edu, only that they can remember that that's the place to go. Within remember, the specific assessment question that we're asking, we're, we're labeling of type recall, which is a questions are prompted to write information, or they're, they're asked to recall information uh, without any prompts, like um, uh, as in like a, not a, a list of options or some other method of trying to get them to select which one's the appropriate one. We just wanted to pluck it out of their brain. Right. So any question like that will get remembered, will get labeled remember recall. Hmm. So we, we decided, and I'm not sure this was actually a good decision <laughs> in, in, the, in the long run, I'd love to, to hear opinions on this, but we ended up putting this in the object definitions type. So in there is a URL that has, uh, you know, the whole URL, verbs, blooms, remembering list. So each one of those um, URLs will link to the page that pretty much has this information as well as example questions. So that our IDs, when we, when our instructional designers go and work in other courses, they can look at example questions to kind of help them right. you know, decide what the labeling is and so forth. In retrospect, I think it might have been might have made more sense to put this in extensions, but that's this is where we put it for now. Right. Uh, okay. So then, aside from that content, we have several views that our students uh, that our users of our course site are using. One of them is the student dashboard, and so this is just a tool for them to uh, to uh, see their progress. The competency-based education portion of this course kind of comes in here. Our students are able to progress at any speed they want, um, but they have to take a sort of a minimum speed. It's kind of like those old games where like there's a, a wall with spikes chasing you and you have to keep going. <laughs> it's kind of the same way. Uh, they have to keep up, but they can, fin they can in theory finish the course in a day. Mm. And a lot of this content is stuff that this group would probably find like obnoxiously obvious, like how to forward an email, that kind of stuff. Right. But we have a lot of students who struggle with that. Then we have an instructor dashboard, uh, and this we're using. Uh, we're going to use the, the D3JS and XAPI framework that um, that ADL has already posted for us, and uh, use that for a lot of the interactive charts for the data in regards to their progress of the course. And then we're going to have an instructional design dashboard, and this one I'm not ready to show quite yet. Uh, we this this one will actually <laughs> show uh, the assessment and interaction data based on the framework. So instead of looking at, at it from a perspective of progress, what you'll see is something similar to uh, the Bloom's taxonomy selection mm -hmm. system. So if I want to go look at all the understanding assessment objects, I would click understanding, see them, see their scores, those kind of information related to them, and so forth. So I we have I have some sketches and some concepts of what I want to do, but I'm not ready to show that quite yet. So hopefully here in maybe uh, three or four weeks. Cool. All right, Jonathan. Uh, um, yeah. uh, I, sorry, I'm, I'll save my question to the end actually. Okay. Uh, so from Learning Locker, the dashboards, student and instructor are pretty much taking the traditional our, our normal XAPI statements. The instructor, the uh, instructional design dashboard will also pull pull specifically the bloom ones as well. So we've kind of segmented out what data is going where in this case. Uh, so to, in order to make this all make sense within the course, we provided, we created somewhat of a parenting scheme uh, to standardize how things were connected to each other. And in this case, we labeled each statement as fitting in one of three buckets. Either it was a, an activity, an action, or an operation. So operations are like low cognitive things. I, I clicked play, um, I submitted something, I viewed a page, things that people just sort of do without thinking. Or some programmers here would be like terminal commands for Craig, it might be drinking coffee, you know, those kind of things. Yeah. Uh, actions here are things that take a little higher cognitive function on Bloom's taxonomy. This is four of those pie pieces. Uh, and then the activity level is like the whole course or a whole competency level. So anything coming out of interactions was an operation, anything out of our content or assessments was an action, and then it's analyzed from the entire activity level. And then I just have, I think this is my last slide here, but um, sorry, I couldn't make a pretty image, I didn't have time for it. But essentially, we are 
we didn't use this, the state API uh, only because we just, I don't know, we just didn't really have time to look into it enough. I wish we kind of had. Hmm. But the what we're doing is if they go into a, a sort of like a course page, then the moment that they access the course page, we create uh, a statement with the verb progress to store all of their activity as it relates to that one specific page. So if they log into page 1.1.1, and they view and they play some stuff and they click some things and they submit some whatever. All that stuff gets parented to the ID of the progress for that specific page. When another progress gets complete or gets created is when it's for a different page, or if they have uh, attempted um, a uh, attempted to finish the assignment and, and complete it and failed, uh, and then we start over the progress again. This doesn't exactly show that, but. Uh, and then we start progress again and we collect from that sort of iteration of their interaction. Because ultimately this course will at some point get to the get to the state where it's not confined to a three credit, you know, one semester course. And uh, we because we don't have that solid time frame to work with, it's a little um, it's a little more difficult for us to figure out how to uh, segment information. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So short term at this point, for us, we're just trying to get this course done. <laughs> There's a lot of content to do and uh, see what we can do. We have the D3JS and XAPI stuff to, kind of, to figure out. And this is my last slide. The, uh, the next round for us, is, you know, for the next design cohort, we want to add res our pages to be responsive based on the Bloom taxonomy results. So if somebody's struggling with a certain piece, then we want the page to highlight or adjust content a little more of adaptive learning techniques. Yeah. Um, set up A-B testing, and then uh, we, I mentioned this briefly before to, to Craig, and <clears throat> I'm curious if anybody else is looking into this as well, but we would right now all of our competencies are hard-coded into our system. I'd really love to be able to look at in Lock or Scos or some other competency taxonomy system mm -hmm. and see how we can integrate that as well with the content metadata like LRMI and Dublin Core. So. You know, yeah, you know, um, it's a shame that Jason Haig is actually not on this call. <laughs> he, he did some uh, fairly extensive uh, um, investigation of, uh, of LRMI and Dublin Core and Inlock and SCOS, and, et cetera, um, for something he was pursuing uh, a few months ago. So, mm, okay, that might be. Well, that hopefully, might be. he watches the video. And, and yeah, I, <laughs> I make I make them all watch the video, so it's cool. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. We pass it around Slack. All right. Well, Jonathan, thank you. Actually, does anybody have any questions? Let's see, Let me check the thing here. No. Yes, hold on. Let's see. Oh, we got a question. Should I switch this over to you? Uh, I can do that. Hold on. Oh. Hey, uh, Jesse, you're you're uh, you're unmuted. You had a question? Hey, hi. Um, hey, Jesse. Uh, hi, hi. Um, I uh, I found your decision uh, somewhere is, is similar with ours. Mm -hmm. Like uh, we incorporate uh, the SAPI in content. And then SAP plus Bloom in assessment. That's mm -hmm. yeah. This is same as our decision. And um, but um, uh, we put uh, the Bloom level as a kind of metadata uh, because we don't have a luxury to do something like LRMI. So mm -hmm. uh, we uh, start to incorporate some. Uh, the most important metadata in our SAPI statement. And mm -hmm. the first priority is the competency network ID for the piece of content. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the, the other one is the Bloom's uh, level. For example, uh, the level one uh, corresponds to uh, remember. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But we put it in the uh, Extension. Yeah. Uh -huh, for the object. Do you think that's a um because yeah you do the problems too so I think maybe we should do some alignment. Yeah, okay. I'd love I'd love to look at if you especially if you have an example of the the question the alignment and your statement I I, I think it would have made more sense to do extensions particularly because I think it would be useful and, and you would. I think you might be interested in this too to compare frameworks, and I think in extensions we could do that. We could we could tag with blooms as well as facets of understanding, 
any of the other tons of you know frameworks there are and, and kind of look at content from two um, theoretical perspectives and get a, get a concept of where the improvements could be. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like you mentioned, uh, it's interesting that uh, Brooms is not included in you know, IMI. So uh, we just incorporate the uh, crucial metadata for us in the extension. That's that's our thought. Yeah, yeah. I think that definitely makes sense. And Jesse's comment, uh, we had an email go out between a couple of us, and yeah, yeah, uh, we were talking about where the appropriate place to put Brooms would be. Hmm. Yeah, and uh, I was stating that LRMI and Dublin Core don't don't technically have a spot for it, for, in, in my opinion, that, that fits learning frameworks. It's very just descriptive of the content itself. Right. Uh, what, it, what they do have is a spot for standards, which isn't a, a, a research framework or a, even a perspective to look at ID. It's just, it's just more of a, a, an agreement about what the content's going to have. So uh, anyways. Yeah, and also the um, the last part that you mentioned, the uh, ID dashboard, mm -hmm. uh, instructional design dashboard. Yeah, um, that's a key component in our um, plan too, but we haven't decided uh, how to make it. We have evaluated several possibilities. And then we also need to um, consider it like a workflow. Mm -hmm. For example, if a teacher had already worked with many tools, and maybe other dashboards. Yeah, so that's all the considerations. But uh, this is the part that uh, I would like to uh, explore more with your team. All right, yeah, that sounds good. Let's have a talk. I'll, I'll show you guys what I'm thinking of at this moment. I think right now we're not expecting to expose Blooms to, the, to our instructor or our students. It's really just on the back end for the IDs to formative and summative uh, while the course is being delivered, since occasionally we have the opportunity to change content during delivery um, or might make improvements during delivery. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, and, but the, the instructor perspective would be interesting too. So yeah, let's totally talk and share notes and see where we could go with a, a common dashboard for that. Yeah, and actually instructor uh, look at the learning design and all these uh, data from a higher level, uh, mm -hmm. I mean from the hierarchy uh, perspective. Yeah. So yeah, we should have a way to uh, visualize uh, the data from the framework hierarchy. Right. Yeah, I think that would be the most useful for people in our field. I would think. For educator, for uh, instructional designers. Mm -hmm. mm hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I I, you know, I I wanted to ask actually before I know we have one more question actually, but um. Uh, I wanted to ask, I, I saw that email exchange, uh, I think the one you guys were talking about, and I remember wanting to ask you um, if that was just between the three of the three or four people or if that was in uh, one of the Google groups. I got to the point where I lost track, so I, I wasn't sure. <laughs> I, th I think it was uh, just direct emails. It wasn't in any of the okay. forms. Okay. Well, I, I probably, and I'll, this is more of a note to myself because I'll be listening to, the, to this recording again. Um, to catch up with you guys about that, because I, I, there were parts of that that I wanted to weigh in on, but I was like, well, I, I want to make sure that's part of the, the, the whole community, because uh, I think you're right. I think it, it deals with something that we, well, we'll get to that later. First, let's get to uh, Patrick's question. Hey, Patrick. Hey, Patrick, are you there? Uh, yep, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, great. I'm um, oh, sorry, was, uh, I'm not sure why you unmuted me. But, oh, no, no, you had your hand up. I thought you had a question. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I must have hit the button. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no problem. I'll, I'll, I, will, uh, I, I will remute you then. Sure about that. No problem. Uh, let's see. I think that was it. And actually, uh, in that discussion, um, and sort of kind of get to what I was going to ask, but but um, yeah, I'd like to kind of pursue this more too because I think there's a definite well, I mean to kind of put it bluntly, an instructional design angle, so to speak, that needs to be explored. Um, I don't know, I'm, I'm not sure how to do that to kind of bring that to more people, but that was a good start of a conversation that I probably need to reread. So, um, Jonathan, thank you so much for this. I'm uh, I'm, I'm excited to see uh, what will um, what you guys are presenting at 
the um, at the boot camp. Now, I, as I understand it, you may not be able to make it to the DC area for the actual boot camp. Um, that's correct. That would be that's too bad because, unfortunately, I mean, obviously, all things considered, I would rather hold it in Hawaii. But um, I work I work for the federal government, and they're not going to pay for that. So um, <laughs> I'm just going to throw that out there. But um, but we're probably going to set things up so that. Um, We'll, for the presentation, for people who can't be here, we'll be on uh, GoToWebinar. And even the people who are presenting okay. live here, um, will their um, presentation will be done over live over GoToWebinar as well. So um, we will coordinate with you about that later. But that sounds good. And if there's somebody I can email to convince them to send you to Hawaii, just let me know. Oh, man. If, I, if there was, like, one pressure point, yeah, we already <laughs> – I'd already have it. So uh, let's see. Well – Possibly, possibly one day. But uh, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. Oh, yeah, that's right. Man, you think I, you think I was not operating this? You know, uh, oh, there he is. He had his hand up. John Costa had his hand up. I'm gonna unmute him. Hey, John. Oh hey hey! I just put it down because I figured I missed it. But uh, no 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 no, you're you're totally. I, I had a question I, about, about the about the metadata. Um, uh, I guess for this we were having a. Oh, am I uh, am I on now? Today? Yeah, you're totally on. Go for it. Oh okay. <laughs> All right. Well, just one one last question uh, for for Jonathan. I don't know if you can. Uh, oh yeah yeah. Hold on. Let me uh, let me let me re unmute him. There you go. You're both on right now. What I was what I was wondering, and I was listening to your discussion with Jesse. I'll, I'll probably um, get with Jesse on it tomorrow during our meeting. Um, but uh, it, it, the, uh, the the data about you know the learning levels and things like that, especially with respect to blooms, um, are you storing that stuff with in the content, or are you gathering that out of you know lookup tables and stuff? I guess uh, in your LRS. Um, Based on the activities that are that are flowing in, I mean, I'm just yeah. Uh, we're going to be building that out over the next two or three weeks. But the current expectation is that we are going to import. We're going to have a taxonomy set up in um, in WordPress that has Bloom sort of set up in a system where we can just do a drop down selection box on the metadata of the object in WordPress. And then when the student submits, every uh, every question will will shoot out its own uh, statement that'll have its uh, blooms um, integrated into that object, uh, the type or whatever it is that I did, wherever it is I put it in the actual statement. So then we'll do queries from LRS to uh, into the dashboard for the ID to expose that data. Is that's the current expectation? I think there's probably a more efficient process, but it's the one that I think we have time to do. So. Yeah. Yeah, that'll, that'll, that, okay, cool. And I, I use WordPress as well, and I was just thinking about the fact that you could have all that metadata behind everything that's in there. So that's brilliant. Like yeah, that. and we're gonna we plan on open sourcing everything. So as we progress, and um, I don't know if we're gonna make that a plugin or what, but at some point we'll end up sharing that data and that functionality, and then you know other people who have WordPress who want to use it for that intent are welcome to. Okay. All right. Awesome. Thank you.